Right. Here we go. I, I brought him back. Okay. And now we move to the bus wheel. Jeremy, what's a boss battle in D&D time? I'm glad you asked, Pete. So in Pete and Jeremy's D&D time is a rite of passage for characters. When they reach certain level breakpoints, they are the breakpoint between level three and level four, again between six and seven, and finally between nine and ten, they're required to undertake a boss battle uh, in which they are put up against a t one of our many treacherous bosses. If they complete the battle, they progress to the next level. They also gain a sweet bonus, a lot of Bartholomew bucks, which they can use to get cool magical items if they so choose. If they fail, well, we haven't had one fail yet, so we'll see. Yeah, interesting. But, uh, well, <laughs> how are you guys doing? There are some, there are some, there. y'all excited? <laughs> Just pile on the pressure there. <laughs> Oh, I mean, if, if we haven't had one fail yet, that means that they must be impossible to fail, right? You know, no failure this year, right? <laughs> um, yeah, Pete and I aren't going to start off 2020 with TPKs. We got zero <laughs> TPKs, zero kills even. Yeah, that's a really low number, isn't it, Jeremy? You got to get those up quick. Yeah. Well, um, and just to clarify, wait, 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 wait. just move October to February and you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> In order to consider yourselves successful in the boss battle, uh, one thing must happen, and that is the boss be defeated and their plan thwarted. You don't have to live, as in Pete and Jeremy's D&D &D time, you come back when you die, but you do have to stop them. And uh, so, Pete, you want to you wanna talk about the bosses? Yeah, yeah for sure. We got uh, four <laughs> bosses on the wheel for your, uh, for your perusal this evening. Mm -hmm. We have the Dryad of Middle Park. The Glass Dragon, the Fungus, and Vincent Van Gogh. <laughs> One of these things is not like the others. <laughs> uh, additionally, as always, we have Player's Choice, at which you will choose one of those four options, only going on the name, which I always like people trying yep. to be like, all right, which is the one that is going to be the best for us to beat? And then, of course, the GM's choice, where me and Jeremy have pre-selected. Uh, which one we will be picking if it lands on that. Chat's all about this blood, by the way, guys. They're really calling for blood. Yeah, we're going to have to... Uh, I'm, just, <sighs> I'm just adding D6s of damage to all of my monsters right now. No, I'm joking. Uh, Jeremy, would you do the honors of spinning the well, wheel? Before we spin the wheel, how do you guys feel? Any oh, of yes. those names, like, call out to you or interesting? I know a couple of you have uh, plant-like or plant-associated characters. And there's one very plant centric creature on there. Yeah, there's uh, you know, the goats are uh, are nuisances certainly uh, <laughs> to those who are are plant based or live in a you know in a pastoral environment. Uh, so perhaps uh, addressing this particular goat, uh, such as it's nefarious mm -hmm. in the lands of D and D time, let alone would be a threat back to the home pasture. Uh, that, that that could be a a concern for Vadius. Mm -hmm. One of us is a nuisance to trees. I see. Is that, is, that a, is that a vote against the dryad? Which way are you leaning right now, Thrum? Yeah. Uh, what are you doing? Thrum is feeling extremely, like, the nervous energy is very much there. And <laughs> it'll probably go away as soon as we, as soon as Thrum actually gets into a battle mm -hmm. but as stands lots of nervous energy <laughs> and they all sound very fun and interesting <laughs> as typical for anything in the lands of D&D &D time interesting and uh, is anything interesting to Juni in particular what Juniper would really like to avoid having to fight anything outside of the uh, fauna kingdom so Avoiding fungus, avoiding the dryad. <laughs> the, uh, Let's go for that goat. goat yeah, go for the goat <laughs> or the dragon. Go uh, for the goat. Like you know that's what they say. Goat. goat is very good to eat. Dragon also. The glass Jeez. dragon also sounds like it would be very satisfying for Morath to put an axe through. Um, but oh yes, I would love to shatter some glass. Jeremy, there's only one way to find out what it's going to be. 
All right, and round and round and round it goes. Where it stops, nobody knows. Jeremy's in the fun position of getting to know what it is before it happens. Oh, <laughs> Pete, it's our favorite. Ah, yes. Uh, the choice will be upon myself and Jeremy. Uh, and uh, as such, I believe the one that we have pre-selected for this evening was Pete, the Dryad. Dryad? I was going to ask, what's your pick? The Dryad of Middle Park, I do believe. Very well. All right, y'all. You'll be battling the Dryad of Middle Park. I wish you all the best. Uh, you're in a Pete adventure, so as Mistra was saying in the chat, uh, they're dead. Xandril's giving you an uh-oh, kipagettios. <laughs> good luck, y'all. Uh, you might need it. Um, We're going to be back in just a moment. See and you soon. Yeah. <laughs> Hey there, folks. Do you know what time it is? Pete and Jeremy's D and D time. Pete and Jeremy's D and D. Pete and Jeremy's D and D time. Pete and Jeremy's D and D. and Jeremy, you know we're gonna have some fun. When we are a race, don't you dare drag us. Pete and Jeremy's D and D time. When we are a race, don't you dare drag us. Jeremy's D and D time. Come and have some fun, play D and D. Beat and Jeremy's D and D time. Come play some D and D with me. Beat and Jeremy's D and D time. So many fun things to do. Beat and Jeremy's the only time. This is our invitation to you.
Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Pete and Jeremy's D&D time and our first adventure of the evening, a fabled boss battle, which we're calling the Dryad of Middle Park. Before we get into the action, as always, we're going to take a brief moment to introduce our character. So without further ado, first up tonight, we have Junie Asterthorne. Junie, welcome. Um, hello. Junie, tell me, how are you this evening? I'm, uh, well, trust be told, I'm actually quite nervous. Indeed, that, um... That certainly makes a lot of sense. Uh, have you heard, of course, that you're going to be heading out on a, a pretty dangerous mission that Bartholomew has assigned you, and with uh, a creature that's normally very friendly to nature, uh, if, you know, historically speaking. Um, how's, um, how's Junie doing? Do you have any kind of plans or thoughts? I just, I'm very conflicted about having to go out on this. I, I am actually quite a, a fan of Bartholomew's other adventurers. So I knew something like this would be coming up soon for me. I've, uh, I've, I've been on enough jobs to where I'm coming up to the point where I have to really prove myself, but I'm really saddened that I have to prove myself against someone that I think I'm very like-minded with, most likely. Um, well, um, we'll have to see uh, if, if that's actually the case. I'm sorry you're kind of coming into this uh, moral conflict here uh, as we uh, enter into your fabled boss battle. Uh, but I have no doubt, Junie, that you will be able to uh, overcome the odds. I'm sure you'll find a solution, uh, whatever that may be. Uh, and so. joining us, maybe someone of an opposite opinion, uh, Morath, from what you understand, there's just a ton of really invasive trees all over the place. Perfect. Um, Morath... Uh, tell me, how are you doing on the eve of this, uh, on the eve of this, your fabled boss battle? I will, uh, what? The, oh, we're fine. <laughs> we're fine. Uh, no. <laughs> don't worry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> we're in the wrong channel. Don't worry about it. Uh, so, Morath. So, you? Uh, what I was going to say is I'm quite hungry. I have had my tacos. I usually have tacos tonight because this is my, uh, what's the word? This is my taco night instead of Tuesdays. That's cursed. Anyway, taco Fridays, of course. Yes. Uh, you said a lot of trees. I, as everyone I assume knows, I used to be a lumberjack back in my town. Yes. <clears throat> Except, uh, oddly enough, people ask me where my lumberjack's axe is. My mold is both hammer and axe, actually. So, because our trees were made of stone, we have to... Uh, when you say made of stone, do you mean very literally made of stone? Or they had, like, they were trees, but they were as hard as stone? No, I'm saying they are literally made of stone. So sometimes cutting down trees was more an act of, of breaking than chopping. Uh, yes, they had valuable resources in them too. Sometimes they'd grow with uh, iron or coal or something or other. Uh, well, this must be a, 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 perhaps a much easier uh, endeavor than you're used to in cutting down trees. I mean, you know, theoretically speaking, I guess we'll see how it actually works out. Yes, if this is simply tree chopping, I was made for this. Um, do you feel, uh, you, so you're feeling confident going in, Morath? Of course, why wouldn't I? Of course. Uh, in that case, Morath, I wish you only the best of luck and success in this, your adventure this evening. And also joining us tonight is Vadius, the bee Therian rogue. Vadius, good evening to you. Good evening. Vadius, how are you feeling tonight before your boss battle? Well, I've been invited to the lands of D&D &D time, and so far I think I've managed to learn a lot about the differences between here and where I come from, and it has built to this point where perhaps I can finally earn an official rank and recognition for my service to the lands. I'm a little worried. I was sent here, of course, on the 
uh, well, what you might call heels of Zuzip, as she is uh, a rogue, a rogue blossomer florin, and if we're dealing with perhaps some plant life of some kind that has gone rogue, this could help me, but at the same time, I would be ashamed that a nefarious person such as her was made it here to cause trouble. Indeed. Well, I hope that, um, I hope that these two things don't come in conflict for you tonight, uh, but certainly this is, there are few better opportunities to prove oneself uh, here in the lands of D&D time than what you've been presented with today, Vadius. Uh, is um, the recognition of the, of the lands part of your uh, reason to come here? It is. I've been sent out, and I think to actually earn the title of uh, inspector or investigator would mean a lot to both me and to show that uh, the denizens of the pasture from whence I came aren't just country bumpkins, as what might be considered, but we are a functional society who takes care of our own. Uh, and of course, if you are successful in tonight's adventure, you all will receive a title that you'll be known of throughout the realm, so this is again very much within the realm of possibility if you are successful this evening, Vadius. It seems that you have a lot riding on this. Yes, I will do my effort to support my team. No one is left behind. Uh, very good, Vadius. I admire your spirit, and I wish you only the best of luck in all your endeavors this evening. And, of course, last but not least, we have joining us Thrum, the Loxodon Druid. How are you tonight, Thrum? I'm, I'm all right. How are you? Thank you for asking. I'm doing quite well as well. Uh, I'm perhaps a little bit anxious. I'm, I'm worried about some of you guys out in the field. I hope everything's okay in tonight's adventure for you. Ah, uh, yes. I do think it is to be expected when coming up on such a high importance, perhaps high danger quest as we have been given tonight. Uh, does Thrum have any particular way that um, He's preparing for this endeavor. Uh, any like particular rituals or different things that he do does before he goes out on a particularly difficult uh, adventure? Mostly trying not to think about everything that can go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> some uh, some mental exercises the Thrum's undergoing right now, calming. Eh, it perhaps is having not quite the intended effect, but at least attempting to calm. Um, well. Thrum, uh, you have spent a, a fair amount of time in Central City, and as you are now kind of arriving at Central City, uh, apparently Bartholomew was going to teleport all of you as he normally did, um, but as he normally would, but the teleportation circle in Central City that he usually sends you to is kind of covered over and blocked. And so Thrum, as you're walking into Central City, usually as a druid, some of the, uh, the grander sights and sounds and uh, machinations of the city can be a little bit overwhelming, I imagine, for someone who's so accustomed to a more woodland and peaceful life. Is that fair to say? There's always, even in the most dense of cities, there's generally some green space to find and to care for and tend. Well, today, as you are kind of stepping about the forest, um, there is quite a bit more green space than you're accustomed to. Um, as you look around, you can't actually really even see any buildings as you're approaching the city from the outside. Um, it's, it's kind of thick woods on the path leading up, and where the normally the great kind of skyscrapers of Central City would appear, you can just see tangled masses of vines and plant life and, and flora that has all grown up and surrounded this forest. and such is the sight that all of you uh, kind of see as you are now approaching here uh, the entrance into Central City. Uh, as you all walk up, um, you guys kind of come together in the space for the first time. You were all you know, told by Bartholomew that your assistance would be needed here, uh, and it's very obvious to see that things are not as they normally are here in Central City. Uh, you guys now uh, are kind of walking down the path and, and you see each other for the first time. What do you all do? Vadius, we meet again. Yes, it is good to see you. I take it you're on the case as well. Ah, uh, yes. It's, it seems we all are. Uh -oh. Hello, everyone. 
Ah, uh, hello. It's unusual to see someone who's perhaps near the same size as I. It seems many of Bartholomew's adventures don't quite reach our size. Looking over towards Juni. <laughs> Hey, uh, what about me? I'm off. Wait, you first. It's actually quite nice to see someone else at eye level for once. Um, Arya, are, are we're all here to deal with the uh, the gardener, right? Yes. Something about a dryad. Excuse me, guys. Are, are any of you able to hear any sounds? Uh, um, currently, no, but for a second before no. I could. Yeah, there was a brief moment, but... Um, I'm having, I guess, just issues on my end. Give me just a second to figure that out. Um, sorry about this, folks, but my, my music's not seeming to work. Um, I... So at, as the four of you are kind of gathering around and, and walking along this path forward into, into Central City, you can see as you're moving now into the city proper, some of the trappings of it, but the ground, the stone uh, that is normally kind of, you know, very well aligned cobblestone that normally runs the streets. Uh, you can see places where it's kind of lifted up and roots have pushed, it, pushed the stones uh, kind of out of array and the paths at odd angles. Thick grass grows up in between cracks between them. Um, buildings on your side. You can see places where people have been like cutting off vines and stuff to get into the normal buildings that they would want to. Uh, but you aren't seeing a lot of people in the streets. Um, one thing you did notice was something of an exodus as you were coming out. You've been passing by individuals that seem to be kind of like fleeing and, and vacating the city. All of them moving away from the, um, all of them moving away from the kind of central area here within the forest. Um, However, uh, as you're moving closer, one kind of group seems to remain a little bit more solid. You can see a very large, ah, there we are. Uh, you can see a very large contingent, contingent of what appears to be the central city town guard and watch uh, that has set up something of a perimeter around town. Uh, and they are currently all kind of standing with their backs around in a circle and spears kind of pointed out around them, just seeming to look off into nothing in the forest. What are all of your passive perceptions? 12. 15. 14. Low. 15. All right. You, through, um, you're kind of noticing as, as you're moving around, very attuned, of course, to the, the natural setting around you. Um, the plants here are... The plants here are shifting and kind of moving about. Uh, the light is dim from canopies of, of trees and stuff that have grown, uh, and... As you're looking on, you notice um, the guards are looking out around them defensively. You're starting to see from the trees above, a long vine is starting to kind of come down into the middle of the space. They are all, um, the plants around do seem to have like a movement and a shift to it. A lot of you are noticing movement, but you see this vine that's kind of just slowly coiling down into the middle of this circle while all of these guards are facing out. So... Just so, I, just so I'm clear, it's like in the middle of all the guards. Um, yeah, coming down from the canopy above, this vine is just kind of like coiling and it's moving very, very slowly. Uh, the rest of you can't even really tell that it's even moving down. It's just a very sh subtle uh, shift and there's a lot going on around you. Um, but what would you like to do? Hmm. So kind of steps forward and <clears throat> looks at the, tries to catch the eye of one of the guards looking directly at him and beh between you all and points above their heads. Uh, it just kind of like, or you say between you all, or you just kind of like silently point and... and... I do, I, I, try, I try to get the attention of one of the guards and point to the vine coming down shout out to them between you all. Um, okay, uh, and the guard that you kind of make eye contact with looks at you and as your hand starts to raise, um, his gaze kind of shifts and turns behind him uh, and the other guards kind of jump at the between you all. This one in particular is behind uh, and he kind of whips around and 
uh, pulls out the uh, the large spear that he was wielding and <laughs> swings at this what some of you now kind of see as it starts to move and lash around, appears to be an assassin vine. Uh, the vine is kind of cut quickly as the guards all around the area um, just all quickly, you know, dispatch their spears at it, uh, but not before the vine kind of whips out and lashes and strike one to the side, knocking them against the wall uh, and sending them reeling and seemingly unconscious in this moment. Um, what are you all doing as, as this happens? I'm going to uh, run forward and uh, try and uh, help my fellow guardsmen. All right. The guard there that kind of got knocked into um, a, a large tree that's over here in front of one of these central city st st skyscrapers that's knocked up, <sighs> uh, kind of catching his breath, just <sighs> uh, leaning over, definitely like completely out of it. Uh, what do you do? Uh, if he's in danger of dying, I'd like to stabilize him. Yeah, if you want to if make he's like at least conscious, I'd like to uh, use my, I, I guess, my lingo, my persuasion through my background feature of Watcher's Eye to resonate with him and to try and get some inside info on what's been going on here. Uh, medicine would probably be more appropriate to start with because oh, he? he's, uh, he's out of it. Um, yeah, this individual is, uh, this individual is just kind of, out of commission at the moment. Uh, you go and try and, and make them a little bit more responsive. But you can see they took a pretty big blow on the head from where they, uh, where they were struck and are uh, kind of bleeding out at this point. Nature has done this to him. It is only just that nature undo this course of action. Please, my friend, <laughs> do not blame the trees in the forest for what is going on. Um, and you kind of say this and, and you bestow um, uh, you bestow healing upon this individual uh, and they regain, uh, they regain three hit points uh, and you see the guard kind of comes to uh, as you're leaning over them, Vadius, and looks up at you. Oh, what happened? Uh, there was a, a vine crept out. It assaulted you all. Uh, We're here as backup. We're here to help. Uh, Bartholomew's adventurers. Thank God you're here. The mayor... Anything you could tell us would help. The mayor, um, and kind of points over to the middle of the circle as he's kind of bringing himself to and, and kind of fighting himself on his feet. She asked for you. Uh, and stepping out of kind of the middle of the circle, um, you see the, uh, the mayor of Central City, uh, a, um, a, a woman wearing a very kind of wide-brimmed hat and pants suit, uh, and is um, striding very kind of like nervously looking around. Uh, and you see her addressing now you, Juni, uh, as you just said, don't blame the forest. Um, she kind of comes up to you and says, I most certainly am going to blame the forest for what's been going on here. It's completely ruining. You know, I had a very big campaign presentation today, and the forest has come in and trampled all over our venerated city. As mayor, well, I believe it is my responsibility, my duty to blame the forest and to denounce the forest for all that it has done to our people. Are you giving a political speech or do you actually care about the city? I care about the city deeply. I was born and raised here in Central City, and it's been my mission to see to it that the people of Central City live and prosper as long as possible. Well, perhaps it would behoove you to work with us, not try to put us to sleep. What's going on? We need details, not simply speeches. Of course, an individual of a particular persuasion and uh, taste, right down to business. I appreciate that. You, of course, are the Bartholomew's, Bartholomew's adventurers that I have called for. That would yes. be the case. Yes, we are. Very good. Uh, you see, here in Central City, uh, we were having sort of a big ceremony in the park. Uh, we were putting in a, a wonderful new monument uh, in the park, and, well, Seemingly out of nowhere, uh, some of the forest just sort of, well, upped and started expanding. Uh, I, of course, was there. My guards rushed to my aid, and I would like to take a moment, she kind of turns around, I'd like to take a moment to commend the fabulous work of the town guard here that have been so instrumental in keeping the people of our city here safe. Uh, she looks back toward <coughs> you. Um, now, if all of you could just go and deal with whatever that is, we can get everything back to uh, its normal working order, and we can continue as promised. Do you have any idea what was the, the monument? Uh, what is the nature of this, of this criminal activity that is going on? 
a new the more statue that you can give us, me. the more effective we can be. Uh, a new statue of me, actually, that was being put up in the park. Um, it was right in the middle of Middle Park, as it were. You're, of course, familiar with Middle Park, yes? I believe that I had buzzed past it during the solstice. Uh, we're very proud of, yes, we're very proud of Middle Park. It's one of the larger tourist attractions here, and it is a, a wonderful patch of greenery uh, right here within the heart of the city. Uh, and, well, we would like all of you to go on ahead and head to there, because that appeared to be the source of it. There was some type of, a, I didn't see it myself, some of the um, wilder speculations say they some, some sort of a tree woman was kind of coming out of the, uh, the space around Middle Park and was presumably causing all of these strange vines. Uh, I was rushed away to safety quickly, didn't get a chance to see, but there in Middle Park must be the source of all of this problems. And if it is a tree woman, as these people have said, then I imagine uh, apprehending or dealing with in whatever means you see fit with this woman would solve our problems. Uh, can you describe the suspect? Uh, she didn't have pink hair like features, did she? Uh, and one of the guard kind of speaks up. Uh, I, I saw her. Uh, no, Green was wearing like a cloak of leaves, uh, green skin, uh, kind of long hair kind of floated behind her, just angry eyes. Is there, uh, given given Vadius's history and the fact that he's grown up amid uh, Florins and bunny folk and, and such, uh, is there some kind of a knowledge that I might be able to uh, invoke or glean to either read more into the description or to uh, get some knowledge about what we're facing? Um, go ahead and make a nature check for me. Nature or Arcana, I'll let you pick. Nature, um, I think that you've uh, spent enough time in that room that you are familiar with, with what a dryad is and that this matches the description of what you know to be a dryad. Um, so information that you, you, you just as a player and person know about dryads, I think that Vaudius could bring that to bear here as well. Okay, thank you. I, I was quasi looking for that. Indeed. Um, so yeah, he, he kind of tells you that. So, uh, the mayor kind of continues, if you would all like to, um, well, the path is right down that way, um, that area has become completely dense and hard to walk through, so I suggest that you be as careful as possible as you proceed. Uh, and we'll, we'll be outside of the city, uh, making sure that everyone who has evacuated is safe. I leave this in all of your capable hands. Um, uh, one. Could you, uh, I, I have an idea maybe that could get us through the, um, some of the problems in, in, in this forest. Uh, is, this, uh, is this addressed to your allies or to the mayor? To, 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 to my allies. Uh, okay. Uh, in that case, the, the mayor and the guard uh, begin kind of retreating back, the guard kind of surrounding and encircling again, some of them now looking to the sky. Uh, and the four of you now stand as Junie says this. Um... I don't know if any of you know about Bloom. You enlightened me. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, go on. Uh, well, Bloom is a, a wonderful god of beauty and growth in nature. He, he's a truly gentle soul, and he just uh, he works so hard to encourage the lively plants and peace and growth and just I, I, I think if I approach the, the forest and announce that we're that I am a faithful of bloom and that we only want to talk and maybe if we could disarm this non-violently then t today could end happily for all of us. That would be optimal. No one has to die. But yes. Yes? Uh, I don't want to come to conclusions. So I'm only going to put this in the air. You notice, even after asking expressly to just have all the details, she would go on, the mayor. 
Uh, I'm just saying we might have an air of caution with this situation with the mayor. She doesn't seem the uh, nice type, I suppose I'd put it. I mean, he puts a statue above themselves. I can't address your own suspicions and instincts. However, I can tell you that if she's the lawful, that if she's the lawful leader of this place and we have a, uh, we've been given a set of instructions that is in support of the people, I will, of course, follow them to the best of my ability. I understand that there are those in charge who sometimes uh, embellish support or words, though, and I'm, I'm going to make a sweeping motion with my two right hands to the jungle that's in front of us. Um, it would, uh, regardless of whatever shine she puts on it, there is a real problem that we have to see. And even if this dryad is a, a nefarious criminal or perhaps just someone who's in pain and trouble and needs help, I think that we still need to go in there. Oh, and no. by, by not go in with our daggers, just stabbing away. By all means, I agree with you, but uh, how do I say this? Okay, I'll just put it straight out. Do you remember the priest? Yes. I don't want to come to conclusions that this is another scenario, but last time we had something akin to this, turned out to be the person that hired us in the first place. In any case, I'm going to follow your lead here and we'll see what we can come up with. I appreciate the deference. I think that we should go in the entrance and even despite my wings, we should stay on foot. There could be clues or there could be people that need to be rescued along the way. Do you think perhaps that you could, that you may be able to help us spot if you could get even higher than my eyes? Or would you, or would you be worried of perhaps meeting too many of the trees? Uh, Pete, is the canopy like super thick in this? Like, is oh. it? Are we talking like rainforest where you can just like walk branch to branch, kind of a thing? Absolutely. Okay, um, that is kind of the situation. Now it's it's going to yeah. be flying space. You can fly. It's just there's a lot going to be in your way, and you're not going to get a lot of view. It's Th not going to like interrupt your ability to fly. Just the, uh, the the seeing distance will be limited for sure. That's not a bad idea. Very strategic. Perhaps in a particular moment. Uh, I might be able to, but broadly, no. It would separate us, and I don't want us to split. I'd rather walk on the ground with you all. If need be, I'll, I can climb. Um, and as you guys have been kind of like talking and moving your way towards this center of Middle Park, um, the foliage and, and thicket has been growing, you know, denser and denser here. Um, there is still a path. Uh, and Junie, you said you were going to try and in invoke the name of Bloom to see if you could maybe... Um, move towards the center. Um, uh, I'd like you to go ahead and uh, what, how are you going about that? What are you doing? As you're uh, kind of, uh, uh, seems like you're taking the vanguard. Yes, uh, taking the lead here and going to present this eternally blooming flower that I carry as an, a symbol of bloom. All right. Um, I would like you to make me in that case um, a religion check or a persuasion check. I will let you pick which one you would like to do. And I'm gonna say you have advantage on this. 16, all right. Uh, as you kind of present this flower forward, um, you guys have been walking along the path for some time and you reached a point where it was starting to, you could feel the forest starting to kind of clutch and close around you. But you see Juni at the forefront. You take this moment and you kind of present this flower. You see Juni in a moment of silent contemplation as they hold out the symbol. And this encroachment ceases. And then behind you, the path that you've been walking around, trees and vines kind of cover over. And in front of you, what opens up is a very narrow and thin path welcoming you forward into the forest beyond, near jungle. And uh, as, as we're marching along in uh, Entithrope, Bunny Folk, and Florin language, I would like to simply announce that we're, you know, 
We're here to investigate what's happening. If you are in trouble, please, uh, you know, shout out now, let us know, and uh, help us help you. And I'd like to do that in those three languages. Okay. Um, also, uh, also make me a persuasion check. Okay, natural 20. All right. Um, you continue along this path that Jenny has opened up, uh, and where it eventually leads you is something of a clearing. It's not a large one, uh, but there is a space here where only kind of graf grass is growing on the ground, uh, and you can see what appears to be a massive statue of stone and iron uh, of the mayor and the woman that you just kind of saw rising monolithic out here in the forest. Uh, and that statue appears to be, um, she's kind of like kneeling down and like patting what looks like, uh, patting like a child on the head is the likeness in the statue. It's, it's very, uh, um, it's very well what I just described and the <laughs> however you wish to interpret it. But uh, in this space, as you kind of come into it, you begin to hear uh, a soft, almost whispering in the woods around you. <sighs> and kind of darting amongst the trees uh, as you all are standing around here, the path that you walk through kind of closes as the trees move and kind of connect it. Uh, and you can see a shape, a humanoid figure that seems to step between them, only visible for moments as she seems to just pass and step into the trees themselves. Uh, but after taking it looks like some time to sort of evaluate your presence and the words that you've spoken and the manner in which you presented yourselves here, um, she eventually steps out um, and kind of walks forward and looks out at you. You see a woman, not unlike the guard described, um, beautiful kind of flowing red hair that's flying behind her and kind of floating and animated as if by invisible wind. Uh, and you can see her kind of like shirt and clothing of leaves. She speaks out to you uh, in Sylvan um, and kind of says, Good evening, all of you. What brings you into my new kingdom? Juniper will respond to her in Sylvan. Um, uh, hello, miss. It's a pleasure to grace you today. Um, I was, what we were hoping to perhaps uh, talk down the situation so that we can find a peaceful resolution as there are uh, people outside of your forest here that are starting to get very agitated. peaceful resolution is not necessary. I've already found an unfortunately very violent one, but it has yielded incredible results. As a faithful of the flower god, you must know, and she points around, do you not find it beautiful what I've done with this affront to nature? I, I do find it quite beautiful, but as uh... As I've always respected Bloom's wishes, it, it would seem most prudent to find a method that would harm no living creatures at all, so that we might coexist in a beautiful harmony together. Um, she kind of like looks around and kind of holds out her hand, and you see just kind of a bird sort of flutter down and, and land, um, uh, land on a finger as she kind of looks at it. My solution has come to the harm for the least possible number of creatures. The humanoids that occupy this place are blight, and the creatures that now live here are happy. They cannot be in such a way while the humans ruin our domain in this manner as they have done. Um, and she kind of like gestures up to this uh, kind of statue that, um, uh, that that kind of leans here and goes, this was the last straw. Juniper will take a moment to relay everything that the triad has said so far in common to the other three here. Um, 
Do any of you else hear? The room also speaks Sylvan. What did you say, Pete? I was just asking if anyone else spoke Sylvan. Thurin does. So, there is to be no resolution. As I said, I have already found mine. The people are leaving, which they will find somewhere else to ruin. And my home will remain pure and beautiful. I, I, I'm sorry, but I, I have met the leader of people, and she is not the kind that will back down and reside somewhere else. I believe she will continue to claim this as her home. Perhaps we could relocate this sanctuary to somewhere more private, where there would be no intruders. I'd like you to make me a persuasion check with disadvantage. Um, she looks at you and goes, and why should I have to leave? I have guarded over this grove for aeons. I have protected it and they destroy my home. Uh, and you can kind of see and like, she kind of like gestures to a spot um, over behind the statue and you see the trees s sort of part uh, and over on the ground there is a tree that is cut down with kind of it looks like crimson red leaves the same color as her hair um, as she's getting kind of very angry at the idea of being put somewhere else uh, when it looks like uh, she was kind of uh, her tree was taken from her here and she looks out you may either return I allowed you to enter because you presented that you were a faithful of the flower god, but I will hear no more of this. The people of this city are no longer of this city. I'm afraid that here we have the laws of nature clashing with the laws of man, and you have a claim, though I believe it is forfeit in the face of violence, as it is now necessary to arbitrate this, perhaps seeking a bridge between the two. Please, desist your actions and come quietly with us so that this can be resolved. Otherwise, I don't want to have to take harsh action. Many of my friends are Florins and bunny folk, and I'll even say a couple sentences in Grung, because I kind of took all the all the D and D time languages. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, she... But this is where we are going to have to decide things. We have been sent here to resolve this. We're going to resolve it one way or the other, and I'd prefer that it be peaceable and civil, where law meets law. Uh, and kind of looks over at, um, looks over at this time through you. Yes. You are obviously a caretaker of the woods. Do you not see things my way as well? Uh, and kind of leans out her hand. I would like you to make me a wisdom saving throw. Uh, is this a, is this an attempt to charm? This is absolutely an attempt to charm. Then I have advantage. Ooh. Not that it, not that it was super helpful. Unfortunately, um, Unfortunately, a 12 uh, does not succeed. And as this, um, uh, as this dryad is speaking out to you, you start to feel almost an anger being overtaken in you. Of course, this dryad is in the right. The, the people that have been harmed and hurt by this were necessary sacrifices to make this a, a better and, and more in a perfect environment where plants and, and animals can flourish in harmony. The audacity of this mare to tell this dryad to leave. Throom, calm, calm yourself. We're here to find peace. What do you do, Throom? <clears throat> there are many ways to find peace. Why not let this go? Why does 
why can why does one person's peace have to be the same as every other's finally one who speaks sense now leave this place all of you and tell them that they are not welcome back and if they do come back well know that they have not yet seen my wrath I cannot accept that ma'am if we're leaving then you're going to be coming with us um, you there uh, and she now kind of just looks over at you and begins speaking at you in um, uh, begins speaking at you in druidic which only you um, which only you understand uh, and says to you Thrum apprehend the insect uh, Judy she you hear this as well a warning to Vadius as she is also a druid weapons I would like you to roll for initiative. <laughs> All right. Um, Vadius, uh, in this instance, uh, you just hear something muttered in a language that uh, you don't understand. It almost, it, it's, it's strange. It, it sounds like she's almost speaking um, in, in wind or a, a, a swaying of, it, it sounds like wind through branches that comes out of her mouth. Uh, and you see Thrum kind of turn uh, to look uh, and Juni suddenly kind of sparks, uh, sparks and gets nervous also looking towards Thrum. Um, Vadius, you are the first to act in this instance. What would you like to do? Uh, I, I am going to, uh, am I close enough to Thrum that if I move away, would I have an AO on me from Thrum or are we still, are we kind of a, um, what do you mean by an, an AO? Oh, opportunity attack. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's reasonable to assume that you guys weren't like all just bunched up in a, a big pile. I'll say no. Okay. Uh, then I would like to. Uh, I would like to dash over to the fallen tree with red leaves uh, um, to get a, to get away. All right, kind of ducking out and around the statue. All right, so you kind of curve around and turn, uh, and you end up finding yourself a um, a spot upon uh, over on this fallen tree uh, that has been kind of uh, cut down, presumably to make room for the statue. Uh, what do you want to uh, do next? Um, am I? Am I still within 30 feet of Thrum, or am I beyond? Um, uh, you are still within, um, uh, you are still within 30 feet of Thrum. Okay. Uh, as a, well, if you want to be like, I don't believe the, the the I don't believe the, out of the way. What's that? Um, you can be like, you can just fly up a little bit and be out of reach if that's what you're worried about. Um, I'm staying on the ground right now. Uh, as as I have knowledge of dryads uh, in some capacity, and if this is or was her tree, this could be an important uh, asset to hold or to be near. Um, so I'm at least to Vadius, he's trying to be strategic about this. Okay. Um, with uh, with my master of tactics, I can offer the help action. Um, Within, uh, well, I, I, I can be a distance. I, I can be a range okay. away. So it, uh, th this would be up to you, uh, I, I, but I'm simply going to run and I'm going to try and help shake Thrum out of this, uh, out of this compulsion. Uh, yeah. Thrum, come to your senses. What are you doing? And I'll end my turn there. Uh, it, uh, did I take it? I don't know if I, I moved. I moved and I have a bonus action. I guess I'll take an action to be, uh, to uh, uh, dodge, dodge. All right. Um, <clears throat> in that case, uh, you kind of fly over, and as a bonus action, you call out to Thrum, uh, attempting to help them shake whatever control is affecting them. Uh, and Thrum, the turn now passes to you. Um, <clears throat> you've been told to apprehend uh, your uh, your companion here, this bee, and it sounds pretty good to you. Uh, what do you want to do on your turn? 
to, to answer you, you are on the side of the druid. You don't necessarily have to follow the exact orders, uh, but you believe in the druids. Uh, you believe in, I'm sorry, the, um, the dryads' goals uh, and are kind of in support of what they're about right now. So uh, what do you do as it passes now to your turn through? You with me, Thrum? As this bee seems to be somewhat bothersome and med perhaps meddling in affairs that they shouldn't that he shouldn't be, I am going to go over and what is I expect that you probably would have like perhaps several sets of handcuffs eventually. I do carry manacles, yes. So, the first step would <clears throat> be that I'm going to try to grapple this bee and perhaps get the bee under control. All right. Um, so you begin kind of, you watch as Throom begins striding confidently kind of across the grove, uh, making a no pun intended beeline for uh, Vadius okay. uh, as you kind of go over and begin to grab on. Throom is now out of control as you stride. Go ahead and make me a grapple check. Roll 20 is super laggy for me right now. All right. 12. 12. Uh, acrobatics or athletics to contest through. Wait, for... You mean for Vadius? Uh, I'm sorry, yes, uh, Vadius. <laughs> okay. Of, but of course, my apologies. Ah, uh, boo. This, guy, this gets around dodge, it looks like. Uh, is it not, uh, is it not popping up? Uh, well, yeah, it says any attack roll made against you has disadvantage, but that's not an attack roll, is it? No, yeah, it's unfortunately save. not. Or it's not even a save, it's a skill check. Yeah, so, just... Oof, just, double oof. All right, that's fine. Just uh, uh, acrobatics or athletics to contest. Then, yeah, oh, yeah, so Thrum, you kind of... <laughs> Uh, you kind of wrap two of your arms around your uh, ally here and begin kind of uh, locking them, holding them down into place. Probably uh, an arm and a trunk. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Uh, and I would like you to also, at the end of your turn, make another uh, wisdom saving throw um, to try and kind of break out of this charm. You have an advantage because of the help. All right, so 24. Um, for a brief moment, you find yourself kind of... Uh, Kind of snapping to, and you hear Vadius' words in the back of your mind. You hear through stop this, uh, and you think, "What am I? What am I doing with myself?" Uh, and there's a moment of clarity, but the magic is stronger than that. You have one success towards breaking this charm effect. Um, is there anything else you'd like to do on your turn? Uh, no, that will be all. All right. In that case, that's going to bring us next in initiative to, uh, I believe it was either one of you, uh, Juni or uh, uh, Dear Morath, either of you can choose to go. Who would like to go first? So, you feel like apprehending my friend. Let me put this clearly. I don't care what sweet words you heard. Lath is my colleague, and you will not take him without me, let's say, interfering. All right, what do you do? Uh, firstly, without taking out a weapon, all right? Hold up. Okay. So, firstly, right, I'm gonna just, you know, casually... How do I say this? I can technically fly over without actually flying, just, you know, using my wings to gain a, a, some distance over to Thrum and Vadius. Oh, okay, and we're gonna go straight to them. All right. The dryad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to attempt to throw Thrum off of Vadius. Uh, you're trying to take, like, a shove action. 
Um, all right, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, go ahead and make an athletics check contested by your athletics or acrobatics. Oh. All right, so you go over and kind of push Thrum, uh, and uh, as you do so, uh, Thrum is still kind of, um, I mean, Thrum is like holding on, so you like push Thrum back, but I'm also going to have Thrum give you a chance to make a, um, make like a uh, strength saving throw uh, to hold on to the person as you kind of go down and, and, and get shoved and, and pulled away by Morath. Because I think, like, the double grapple... There's no good double <laughs> grapple mechanics here. So go ahead and make a strength save for a 20. All right, so you kind of shove, and, and, and you get the better of Thrum here, but Thrum's got, like, a pretty solid lock grip on Vadius. So you all kind of end up in a, in a bit of a pile here, as Thrum, you and Vadius are now thrown prone uh, by, uh, by your allies' move here. But also, as that happens, I would like you to make another wisdom save in the front. I, uh, I since hold up. I sincerely hope the two large people don't smash the bee because Morath is as large as Thrum and Juni. <laughs> yeah, just, you just gotta hope that the elephant lands the right way with Vagus. Uh, so, uh, you have another success. Uh, this kind of shove from your ally and kind of pushing him out is is getting you to snap out of this a bit, Thrum. But you're still, it's terrible what's happened here. As we move next, I'm sorry. Do you have anything else on your turn, Morath? Uh, not really. Nah. All right, J Juni. <laughs> Juniper is visibly distraught. Not only did she not disagree with the dryad to begin with, but now her friends are turning on one another, and this is just, this is the worst way that this could, this could have gone. What do you do, Juni? Uh, she will rush over to Morath's side and try to uh, support him, help him without getting in the way on whatever he needs to do to get through and snap out of this. Alright, taking a help action? Yes. Um, in that case, that's going to move over to the Dryad of Middle Park uh, and the Dryad is going to look towards you, Morath, um, and do not interfere in my business, Tiefling. Uh, and throws out a hands to hand toward you, uh, and a restraining vine lashes out towards you. That's a nine to hit. <laughs> I assume that very much misses. No, that doesn't touch me. Okay. Uh, and a second one. Uh, no, that does. The other hand, the first one flies at you, and you kind of uh, bat it aside, but the next one catches and pulls around you. Um, the vine, as it kind of reaches out, um, her hand is still kind of holding the vine towards you, but it becomes solid and, and kind of entangled around you as it locks you in place. You take 11 points of bludgeoning damage. Oof, it's a, uh, it's a hefty roll on that one. Uh, as well as um, at the end of her turn also, you can see uh, the hand that she kind of missed the other vine with uh, raises up, and you start to see stirring in the forest around you. Um, as one of these, uh, as a kind of moving, hulking, animated tree begins to walk into the space, as well as some of, like, the bushes and shrubs also start to, like, pff, catch and jump up and begin, like, scrambling in, not making any sounds, just the heavy uh, smash of the roots on the ground <laughs> as a tree also enters the fray, uh, and they are going to roll initiative into this next round. Uh, and that's going to bring us around to the top of the initiative, which is you, Vadius. You are currently being uh, restrained by your ally here. Okay, um, I will attempt to break out. All right, go ahead and make an acrobat. Oh, uh, athletics check. Uh, so that's five. Um, you still have to contest it through. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, both of you are kind of at disadvantage because you're prone, but you're both that way. Um, you go to try and hold on, but Thrum's grip is surprisingly tight upon you. Uh, he's a very large creature. Uh, I guess not surprising. <laughs> Let me take the surprising part back. Uh, anything uh, else on your turn, Vanius? Yeah, bonus action. Morath! Morath, help me! <laughs> uh, aid action. 
Um, just to be, just for the record, uh, Morath already received a help action. Uh, oh, but hasn't so, used it yet? Yeah, so it won't stack. Oh. Um, then, uh, let's go to, uh, Junie! Junie! Oh, All right. Yes. Uh, in that case, um, as we said, let me just roll initiative for, for these little guys. Um, did they come up? Oh, yeah, there's one. And... Where's, where's my tree? You rolled a seven for the tree. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, in that case, I believe the next one to act are these little shrubs. Uh, so, uh, a few of these shrubs kind of run out, uh, and um, you see four of them in total as they kind of begin hustling and bustling along the ground. Um, they run up to you, but uh, two of them are, are going to come after um, you, Junie, uh, and two of them are going to come after you... Uh, Morath, uh, as you guys are the two that are currently unrestrained by Thrum. Uh, and so the first two are going to make attacks against Morath, uh, and they have an advantage because you are restrained. Oh, man. Uh, so the first one is a 20, and the second one is a 2. Um, does 18 hit you, Morath? Uh, yes. You take four points of damage in total as these things uh, come after you, and then uh, the other two are going to go after you, Junie, so they don't have advantage. That's a critical failure and a six. I assume both of those miss. Both of those miss. Two little shrubs are coming up and <laughs> trying to catch at you, Junie, um, and that's going to be all for their turn as we move next to Throom. What do you want to do, Throom? Throom is going to try to dig through Vladius's pockets and find the manacles. All right, go ahead and make me a sleight of hand check, I guess. Or investigation would probably be more appropriate for this... Uh, for starters, I need you to make me an investigation to try and find the manacles on Vadius. I think it's both. Um, you're looking all over their form. You kind of start, like, reaching into their pockets and stuff while you have them restrained. Uh, or Vadius, like, how do you store your things, Vadius? Well, um, I've, I've taken to try wearing elements of clothes, but obviously none are, are fitting me intrinsically. So it's probably almost like a series of belts, like a utility belt kind of a thing, where I, I keep pockets, since otherwise I'm just kind of a big fuzzy bee. All right, reaching it all into all of these uh, utility pockets and trying to find... Uh, you, you can't seem to locate the handcuffs through. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do on your turn? Uh, no, that's about all. Uh, when's the trying window? to make this restraint stick a little bit better. <laughs> uh, another wisdom save into your turn. Uh, 15. Uh, you have three successes on your save. With that, uh, through you kind of come to your sentence senses, like, w what have I been doing? Uh, and through you kind of come to, you, you as you regain your senses, uh, you look down, you currently have, like, Vadius in a complete and total lock while you have your, uh, handcuffs. You're, like, digging around in his pockets for his handcuffs. What do you do in this instance, Thrum? Uh, oh, well, hello there, and I just kind of... <laughs> Pat Vaudius gently on the head, and if it's allowed, let him go. <laughs> um, at the end of your turn, it's it, yeah. I think you could do that as a free action to just like stop grappling. I think that's fair. Um, so uh, you're still kind of uh, you're still kind of laying on the ground next to Vaudius as well. So as you end your turn, uh, as as Thrum is kind of like laying down next to you, he just lets go and just looks at you, Vaudius, like, oh hi. <laughs> Um, and you hear the, uh, the dryad kind of, <sighs> uh, Morath, what do you like to do? So, I have help from June, yes? And a vine is currently grabbed onto me, yes? Um, say, uh, yes, there's currently a vine restraining you. And it's from this dryad and she's holding on to it. Uh, indeed. Okay, uh, can I take a grip of this vine and kind of yank myself in the opposite direction that she is and, you know, throw her off her balance? Um, the way to, the only way you could yank it would be, like, pulling her towards you or you turn towards her. Is that what you're going for? Yes, I'm trying to pull her towards us. Okay, great. Um, yeah, go ahead and make me, yeah, cool. Go ahead and make me an, uh, strength, uh, strength check. It's just raw strength. Just raw strength? Yeah. Uh, I have advantage on this because I have helped. That is true. 
Also, oh, you're not raging yet. Uh, so yes, you just have advantage. Um, this will be contested by... Uh, this will be contested by her wisdom. That's the magic that she's doing. Yeah, you're, you're trying to just overcome this restraint with, with pure... Um, just pure... Wisdom strength. or charisma? Yeah, that's charisma, by the way. Yeah, I know. I'm letting it be her magic ability since this is a magical effect and not her strength that's effect. Okay. Like a spell or anything. Um, okay. So you go, go to dr um, drag the forward, uh, and as you kind of pull on the vine, you find yourself still kind of <sighs> whatever is reinforcing the vine, it almost feels solid, rather than like a vine, like stiff and hardened. Uh, and you are unable to kind of budge the drive in this moment. Uh, who just kind of looks at you and, and smiles gleefully at your failure in this instance. Anything else you want to do more of? If that's the way this is going to be, I will use your bark as my next handle. Uh, all right. Let's move on, Juniper. And Dicey, what do you want to do? This, this violence isn't necessary. I'm sorry that things have had to come to this, and I hope, I hope you'll be willing to stand down before it gets worse. There's nothing that can be done. Uh, um, Juniper will lash out and try to grab the dryad and pull her closer. Uh, 12. All right, you throw out with a 12. Uh, 12 is going to hit. I guess it doesn't matter, but I think I had advantage because of Thaddeus. Um, well, you, you got to lead away. Uh, go ahead and make an attack uh, damage roll. Uh, five points of piercing damage. Uh, you strike the dryad for five points <sighs> uh, as you kind of drag and pull uh, pull her closer towards you. Uh, and from where you are, you able to pull her. If you wanted to move back, so this didn't happen, but otherwise you can pull her right into melee with you if you wanted. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna give I'm, I'm gonna give him more F what he wanted and pull pulling the dryad right up to us. Yeah, so you're right next to, uh, the dryad is right next to you, Morath, and now also uh, you, Juni, as well. Uh, is there anything else on your turn, Juni, as the uh, dryad takes five points of damage? Uh, a bonus action, bomb the summer court again, this time Morath. Alright, uh, go ahead and roll that healing. Morath, you regain four hit points, uh, and we move uh, next initiative to and the one temp HP as well. Oh, okay. Um, my apologies. Uh, so, five, sort of five. Uh, as the tree uh, is going to also come over and move, um, seeing that you are no longer, uh, you are no longer on the side of good, according to this druid, uh, the tree is going to uh, wander over to you, Thrum, uh, and make a attack against you while you're prone. Um, as heavy roots kind of smack into the ground, and that's a, uh, an 18 to hit. Yeah, that will hit. <laughs> um, it could crit, it does not. Uh, 13 points of bludgeoning damage. Um, uh, as the tree just kind of slams its roots down on you, <clears throat> um, landing a, uh, a sizable chunk into you. Um, anything else? Oh, that's the tree's turn. Uh, as we move next initiative to... That's going to be the Dryad's turn. Um, the Dryad already has a vine upon you, um, but they are going to uh, make their other vine attack. Um, actually, they cannot do it because they're close up. Uh, you see they just kind of in their hand conjure something that appears to be a shillelagh, and they're going to bonk at you with a shillelagh, uh, Judy. Oh, man, rolling hot. That, that hits. Um, that's... 12 points of damage. Not the 2, just the 12. Um, as they uh, they land another sizable blow, uh, as their shillelagh <laughs> catches, they can't do anything with their other action because they got you restrained to Morath. Um, and that's all for their turn as well. Um, as they <laughs> uh, as they kind of strike you in this way, Juni, they look at you. I'm disappointed that you have fallen so far from nature's path. Um, just seeming madness uh, in their eyes uh, and just raw anger that you can see behind those words. Um, and that's going to move us next in initiative to the top, which is you, Thrum. What would you like to do, Thrum? You are in the battle on the side. I'm sorry, it's Vadius first. Yeah. Uh, what would you like to do? 
Things are, all right. Things are already uh, I would like fire. to give Morath an aid. And then I am going to, uh, I would like to uh, fly up to a branch. Well, I don't know. Is, is the sentient tree big enough that, like, I could be in its canopy? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Okay. Uh, then I would like to, I'd like to hang out in its upper branches. Okay. Uh, just fly up there. Uh, you do so. And then, uh, lastly, I would like to, uh, given the state of things, I'm going to look around. I'm going to reach into the Welcome's Taking Cornucopia and eat a delicious nectary fruit. And that is going to cast Enhance Ability Strength on me. Oh, interesting. All right, Vadius has uh, advantage on strength checks. Is this an action to do so? It is. All right. Uh, is there anything else? You still have a bonus, I believe? Uh, the bonus was to give an aid to Morath. Okay, uh, help to Morath. In that case, now that's going to move to the uh, the bushes' turns, which are going to... Uh, two of them are going to continue to go after you, Morath, um, as they got you all tied up right now, uh, and those still have advantage. Um, sorry, uh... Roll 20 is very laggy today. Um, one, two. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, my, oh my goodness, the rolls tonight. Uh, that's a three and a six for a total of nine points of damage as Twisted Claws uh, sort of lash out uh, towards you. Um, yeah, uh, and then two more of these shrubs. Um, I, I think they're gonna go after uh, kind of gang up on you, Thrum, who's also down there. So they're also going to attack you, Thrum. Uh, and that's a 15 and an... Oh my goodness, 15 and 18. Only the 18 hits. All right. Oh, and that's going to provoke Just an opportunity. Just for clarity. Yes. Uh, who were those crits on? That was on Morath. All right. Um, I'm sorry if I didn't specify that. Um, that is going to be... Um, in that case, uh, five damage to you, Thrum, uh, as these uh, small shrubs are, are kind of ganging up on you here. Um, is there anything else on those turns? No, that's going to bring us to you, Thrum. Well, Thrum is going to get up and seems to be in a bit of a woody situation. And... He's, and Thrum is going to use a bonus action to cast Flame Blade. Oh. <laughs> and then... You see a look of fear appear in the eyes of the Dryad, who kind of looks over and just, you wouldn't. I would. <laughs> and swing out at the tree. All right, go ahead and make an attack oh, roll. 13. Uh, 13 will just hit. Uh, go ahead and roll damage on that. 11 points of fire, uh, by which I mean 22 points of fire uh, damage. As you slash into this tree with your blade of flame, uh, you see it just kind of, the blade just kind of passes through since it's composed of flame and it ignites uh, upwards and uh, not quite reaching up into the highest branches where you are, Vadius. Uh, but the tree just kind of from deep within it just uh, lets out just a, um, a, a a terrible kind of grumble um, as I imagine it's it's hard for you to thrown, but the situation uh, demands action as nature is so out of order here. Uh, is there anything else you would... Um, like this is not mind? nature. Indeed. This is unnatural in the worst way. The tree is uh, looking very rough uh, with that strike. Um, and anything else for you? Um, nope. Um, all right, that's going to bring us next in initiative two, I believe it is Morath. If it weren't my choice, I'd render this all to Junian Vadius. But now that you have hit Junie, you will find her this my choice. Uh, what do you do? Ah. Uh, you enter into a primal barbarian rage. Um, and what is your action as such? First and foremost, rules on restraint, I can still attack. That is absolutely correct. You just are at disadvantage. 
You mean advantage, because I have help. So yeah, um, negates to zero. Uh, so a strip. So I'm going to conk this dryad pretty much straight in the chest with my really big hammer. Please swing away. Oh, unfortunately, a 10 is going to just miss. Uh, as you um, as you swing in with your uh, uh, massive Hellfire's Grasp, not not the right kind of damage type uh, for this individual, it seems like, either. Um, you swing in, and, and the Dryad just barely kind of ducks underneath the blade, uh, but is a little bit seemingly nervous at you uh, being right up next to you. Doesn't like that. Anything else on your turn? Uh, let's see. No, not really. Nothing besides just an angry, uh, almost kind of hate-filled glare. Like, how do I explain it? I think you explained it well. Yeah. A hate-filled okay, glare. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Uh, and you see, um, yeah, you can definitely see a look of, like, nervousness. Like, you guys aren't necessarily the, uh, not quite as easy to deal with as she was starting to expect. Uh, and with that, uh, I believe that's going to move on next initiative to Juni. What do you wish to do, Juni? All Jennifer will be able to manage to bring herself to do is lay a hand on Morath for a moment to confer some healing energies onto him. Um, all right. Uh, you gain yes. 10 points of health, Morath. She will, will immediately step back and cry quiet. Oh, dear. <laughs> um, all right. Um, that's going to bring us next in initiative two. Um, <laughs> that's going to be the tree. Uh, the tree is is burning right now and does not like that. And there's exactly one person. Who's, by the way, I just for the I assume you stood up through. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, and is going to make an attack at you with not advantage. Ooh. Oh, no, but man, oh my goodness, this tree is hitting like a tree. Um, Ouch. Are you still up after that? No. <laughs> All right. The tree brings its. Uh, one of its massive roots down and just st strikes into Thrum, uh, and Thrum therein falls uh, from the uh, the tree's mighty swing, uh, and that is uh, that is all for the tree's turn. Uh, as we move next in initiative to um, the uh, dryad, uh, who's kind of was just swiped at by you, is going to actually take a moment and focus. Uh, and you see they kind of collapse their hand uh, and their uh, leafed, uh, their leafed kind of drapes that they were wearing. Um, they begin to turn and convert uh, and her skin becomes what looks like solid bark uh, as she casts the bark skin spell on herself. Uh, and that's gonna be all for her turn as we move uh, definitely a, a defensive action looking at the angry, uh, looking at the angry Morath here. Uh, as we move next initiative to the top, which is Vadius. Vadius, what would you like to do? Uh, I no longer have an ally next to the tree, correct? Uh, that is, uh, that is correct, unfortunately. Okay. Um, well, but the tree's not looking too good, right? That's also true. All right. Then what I'd like to do is, uh, uh attack it from its own head that I'm sitting in. I would say that that is an advantage attack. Uh, I'll, I'll give you advantage on that one because it can't really like do anything about where you are uh, and you're just like stabbing into it from inside of it. So go ahead and uh, go ahead and make that attack with advantage. Okay, and that would be sneak attack then? Yeah, that would apply sneak attack. Uh, 18 is absolutely gonna hit. Roll damage on that. Um, as you uh, as you kind of stab down into the tree with your rapier, uh, it pierces through kind of the top and, and the bark uh, where it had been made like kind of cracked and brittle from the sudden flames. Uh, and you just kind of wrench a uh, break in the tree and the magical life that was temporarily animating it through this druid uh, has kind of seeped and absorbed out of it. 
uh, the tree remains still and is once more a tree singed, but still alive. Okay. Uh, tree. Um, is is uh, the dryad close to the tree? Like, it, like 10, um, 15 feet or something? Uh, yeah, within 10 feet, certainly. All right. With the tree's animated force having fled, can I use my move action to, uh, like, grab on to a branch and guide its fall to fall on top of the dryad to try pinning it? Um, I have wings and whatnot. I have a, a grapple. I, I have a climb speed so I can hang on to it. Uh, the tree isn't, like, in a position right now where it's falling over. It's just at rest, if that makes sense. Are oh, okay. To, are you trying to like, pull it down? Right. Yeah, it's not like timbering. It's just, it's just stopped. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. All right. Then uh, what I will do is I will grant a bonus act, or uh, not a not a bonus. I'll use my bonus uh, to give Morath an aid action, and then I will move from the top of this tree before the fire, uh, before the fire consumes it. However, if there's a particularly uh, vibrant branch that I might be able to uh, snatch off of it uh, that I can uh, plant later uh, as a, like a sapling or something, then I'd like to do so. Absolutely. And, then, and then I'm going to sort of jump into the branches of another tree. All right. Uh, and who was that help action on again? Morath. Morath, very good. Um, all right, so you uh, help out Morath and then we move to the shrubs. Uh, which there are still four of those kind of kicking around, and as they have been, two of them are coming after you, Morath. Um, I don't have the... Oh God, these things keep closing on me. All right, I'll just roll it straight up. Uh, D... uh, both of these are plus three. That's a 20. One of them is a 20 to hit. Um, and uh, the other one is... They're at an advantage because you're still restrained. Uh, the other one's going to miss, I assume. What's your AC, Morath? 15. Okay, yeah. Uh, that one's gonna miss. Uh, you take three points of, so you take one point of damage as these tiny shrubs, which were kind of hurting you before, um, as you've gone into this rage, the pain is just blocked out as you just feel something likely brush against your leg. <coughs> um, and the other two shrubs, uh, Froom is down. Um, they're trying to like, uh, I, I think currently they don't, since Juni is being kind of passive and not seeing as much of a threat, they're trying to climb up after you, Vadius. So you see two of these shrubs just start like climbing up into the tree where that you are, but they're not like able to get to you and around by any means. So they're gonna they're just at the top of the tree now near you, Vadius. Uh, they take their whole turn to do that. Uh, and that's all for Shrub's turn as we moved to Thrum. What would you like to do, Thrum? Oh, and you uh, continue go. dying? <laughs> yeah, that's that's not a great situation. Um, you have one success uh, as we move next to you, Morath. What would you like to do? Junior, get Thrum up. Uh, so I'm going to finally try and break free. All right. Since I'm in a rage, this puts it at you advantage. Absolutely have advantage. This is a strength save? Um, uh, I believe it's athletics check. Uh, let me just make sure that that's true. Uh, what'd you get? 19. Okay, yeah, that's fine either way. Uh, you <laughs> rip and just kind of pull your arms to the sides, uh, and the vines around you <laughs> split, uh, and the, uh, the grapple is broken. The restraint on you is broken. Uh, anything else on your turn, Morath? Uh, let's see. Did this... Did this uh, dryad walk away from me? Uh, they're still right next to you, but they have uh, they have bark skin on now. They just spent their turn defending themselves. Perfect. Was that an action to break out? Uh, it I is an action to break out. Okay. Uh, in that case, I have nothing else to do okay. but just stare down at this dryad and brandish my maul very, very angrily looking, even snarling and infernal. Um, all right. Um, in that case, um, that's going to be all for your turn as we move to Juni. What do you want to do, Juni? Still crying, Juniper will run over to Thrum's side and cure wounds him. 
Um, all right, um, Orly. Thrun, you find yourself revitalized. You're still in a lot of pain, but your eyes kind of snap to uh, for the second time in this battle. Thrun's, uh, Thrun's been having bad luck and then incredibly good luck and then bad luck again. Uh, but Thrun, you are back once more. Um, and you're also going to bottle the Summer Court Who. Wow. Oof, bad luck there as well. <laughs> uh, who was, was that on Thrun as well? Yes. Okay. Um, in that case, Thrun, you are at a total of... Four, four plus one. Plus one, great. Uh, as we move next initiative, it would be the tree, uh, but the tree is, is gone. Uh, so we are to the Dryad, um, who the Dryad is now just kind of like... Um, was kind of like staring you down. Uh, they pff, materialize another one of the shillelaghs in their other hand pff, as they're now holding pff, one of each. And they're kind of, they're looking like they're not gonna get much place with you. Uh, and is looking now towards the healer um, uh, as they pff, kind of slide away, provoking an opportunity attack from you. I shot you in half. This is an advantage, I think still? This is, I believe, a straight roll. Okay. Um, oh wait, did you have a, you had a help action, didn't you? That you have not. Yes. So, I did. Yeah, absolutely. I'll make an attack roll at advantage. Thirteen will actually miss with the bark skin. As you go and uh, bring the uh, uh, as as you bring the mace down, um, the dryad kind of uh, it cuts across the bark skin, and you feel it scrape. But it's a hard wood, almost like iron. It reminds you r reminds you more of chopping the stone trees back home than it does any normal tree. <clears throat> Finally, a challenge. Uh, and that dryad is going to come over towards you, Juni, uh, and just... Don't worry, my friend. We will bring you back as... Well... When you, when you leave this place, I will make sure that you become part of our forest. Uh, and is going to uh, make attacks against you, Juni. Uh, it's a 13. That will not my hit. And an 18. That will hit. For six points of bludgeoning damage as one of these shillelaghs <laughs> strikes into you uh, and you feel kind of natural energy <laughs> surging through you in intense amounts as as you were probably familiar. It is not the, the strength of the club, but the magic that imbues it. Uh, and that is all for uh, the Dryad's turn as we move to the top of the initiative, which is Vadius. Vadius, what would you like to do? There are four of these shrubs and the dryad herself. Would any of the it, it was that all four that came after me or just two? Um it was two of them that are now up on the branch. Uh, you could actually just fly away from them. They just don't know how to handle the situation. Yeah, that's fine. Um I would like to So I, I'd like to fly a distance away. Like effectively I'm kiting them, or I'd like to. Right. Um and as I as I uh, go to the next branch. Um, I'm going to use so that's a movement. I'm going to use my bonus uh, to give Morath uh, an aid action, All and right. then I will um, I will uh, put my rapier away and uh, draw my short bow. Okay, and what are you going to attack? And I will uh, I will take out one of the uh, one of the two bushes, or I'll try to one of the two bushes that is not after me, and preferably one I might be able to get sneak attack on. Um, there's none that you can get sneak attack on at the moment, but um, go ahead and make an attack roll. 14, uh, roll damage on that. Okay, yeah. You fire, and the arrow just kind of pierces through the bush, uh, and as it does so, there's just kind of a, a little bit of a puff of leaves, uh, and the bush falls harmlessly to the ground, uh, taken down in one strike. Not super powerful. Anything else on your turn? A uh, mental note to grab some berries or something off of it for replanting later. Absolutely. As we move next initiative to uh, those very same bushes, um, two of which are still coming after you, Morath. Uh, they finally don't have advantage against you. My bad. Um, uh, okay. And as soon as roll 20 stops lagging, as it has been all night, we'll get those attack rolls. Uh, so that's one, two. I'm sorry, they weren't an advantage. Um, oh my goodness, these bushes are out of control! Uh, that's three and six, both of those hit, right? So you take uh, one and three. Yeah, that's, 
That's, uh, that's four damage. That's fine. Four, four points of damage uh, as they're clawing at you. The second one, you do notice that one a bit, but it's still, it's, it's, all, it's all okay for Morath as you are just blinded with anger. Um, that's going to bring us next in initiative to, actually, I'm sorry, there's one that's left the tree. It spends its turn climbing over, out of the tree and running now towards you, Thrun. It ends its turn next to you. Um, as this one bush is doing his, he's doing his darndest. Uh, Thrun, the turn is yours. What would you like to do? Uh, well, first things first, I do feel somewhat poorly, so I think I shall heal myself some. Right, you regain eight points of healing. Um, do you have anything else on your turn? Uh, <clears throat> you look at how uh, how do my other allies look? Do any of them look particularly bad, or do I still seem to be the one in I the worst shape? Junie is the other one that's taken some pretty good hits. And I am going to myself, Balm Junie. <laughs> uh, you see a, a familiar uh, a familiar spell uh, go ahead and roll that healing uh, as you regain two and one um, Juni you feel yourself revitalized a, a fellow druid at this at your side in this moment of uh, in this moment of very deep personal crisis that you find yourself here um, it is I imagine at least some comfort to know there's another one who so respects nature as you. Uh, and that is um, all for your turn, Thrum? Yes. All right, that's going to bring us to Morath. What do you wish to do? You will not look away from me. And I'm going to follow the Striad. All right. And I'm going to now with some gusto and hopefully actually score something good, I'm going to attempt to hit her in the back with my maul. Again. Make an, make an attack with advantage. Well, all of this sucks, but uh, oh, eventually man. I will crit. Uh, I apologize for your bad luck, uh, but as you swing down uh, again, the uh, the bark skin protects uh, the middle park dryad uh, as they are Yep, still bearing down over Junie uh, at the moment, and they're kind of looking back at you. Uh, and they're starting to, like, regain a little bit of confidence, uh, seeming for you not to be maybe quite what they were making you out to at first. Uh, as we move next in Initiative 2, um, that's going to be Junie. What do you want to do, Junie? Juniper's tears will clear up a bit, actually, after Thurman healed her, and she'll regain her composure enough to look at the dryad. You want me to become a part of this forest? Very well. That is exactly what I will do. Oh, she my goodness. Up a great tree form. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I forgot you had this. <laughs> um, I don't remember if this completely disables the other benefit that the quarter staff provides. Um, I don't know, and we'll assume it works in your favor until we look it up later. Uh, okay. what, what happens to Junie? What does this look like? She pulls her quarterstaff close to her, and it melds with her a bit, making her grow in size and bush out and be more of an actual tree-looking tree instead of a tree-looking person. Uh, and you are a great tree now, correct? Yes. All right. Uh, and yet you all see Junie undergo this incredible transformation uh, as... Well, as they described, they are now look truly like a tree, uh, and the dryad kind of like pulls back in surprise, like, like. Uh, and anything else on? She will also cure wounds herself. Righteous! Oh my god, that's a bonus action. That's so good. Um, all right, uh, and you regain five points of health uh, as you revitalize, uh, and I believe that's going to bring us next initiative to the dryad herself uh, who looks at you and just how could one so blessed with nature's might be so wrong 
uh, and is going to uh, hit at you with a res- uh, actually is going to step back, provoking two opportunity attacks. Is going to risk it one from you, Morath. She's getting a little too comfortable with you, maybe Morath, uh, as well as you, Juni. Um, I uh, don't do know you- if she's immune to it, but the area at my feet and thus the area she's standing in is difficult terrain at the moment. Um. Okay. Uh, in that case, um, well, she's just stepping, she's basically taking a five-foot step anyway, so she's okay, um, on her range, but, uh, more after you hit for 22, uh, go ahead and roll damage on that. Um, and the 15, unfortunately, is going to just miss, uh, but 12 points of damage, and she's going to make a concentration check, which she is not super good. Oh, no. Uh, you slash at her for 12 points of damage, and the bark skin just kind of comes down, uh, and uh, leaves seem to cover her skin once more. She steps back, and just uh, frustrated, uh, is going to uh, lash. Hmm? Does that then mean that the 15 would hit? Um, it would, but they happen simultaneously. Okay. That's part of the opportunity attack, I think, is how right. cool it here. Um, uh, and then she is going to uh, lash out uh, at both of you with restraining vines, and she's going to make attacks against both of you as she steps backwards. Oh, and that's a 17 against you, Morath, and a 19 against uh, our tree. 19 hits. Uh, you take nine points of bludgeoning damage and are restrained, but are actually still in melee because you have reach, which you... Oh, wait. Do you have reach? You just, oh, it's just the 15 feet. Um, all right. Oh, that's right. I wouldn't have been able to swing at her anyways. Um, well, you were able to swing because she just, she was in within five feet anyway. But uh, Morath, does 17 hit you? Uh, yeah. Okay. Six points of bludgeoning damage. And both of you are once again <laughs> coiled up in these vines as she's this holding you both in place as best as they can. Um, this is um, magical bludgeoning damage, but you still resist that. That's not true. So you just take three. Okay. Um, and nine, two. Journey, uh, which in your new tree form you're fine. As we move next in initiative to the top, Vadius, what do you want to do? There's three of these shrubs still kicking around, as well as the dryad who's starting to look nervous, taking some, a serious hit in the form of that slam from uh, Morath. Alright. <clears throat> I will move to another tree branch to continue kiting the two that were chasing after me. Alright. As a bonus action... Uh, I will give another uh, another aid to Morath. Um, okay, you do so, uh, and go ahead and make an attack roll against that uh, other vine. Uh, the vine or the bush? Oh, the bush, yes, of course. Well, I have, uh, so there's, uh, there's, there's two now, there's, you, there's one more that was on the ground, right? Yeah, next to through, there's actually all three of them are on the ground now. Um, so oh. all, all of them have your effect on it. Um, Sneak attack. So, in in that case, uh, if the three shrubs are on the ground and I'm not in a, in a total immediate danger, but my friends are caught up in vines, uh, I'm actually going to um, I'm going to sting from above the dryad because uh, there is people in melee with her, right? Uh, nope. She took a five foot step back to get out oh. of range to use her vines. Oh shoot! All right. Um, then never mind. I'm going to take out one of the bushes. Okay. Uh, roll damage. Uh, that goes down, no problem. Uh, you, you want one of the ones on Morath or the one on Thrun? Uh, the one, uh, Morath can take it. Uh, right. Thrun, Thrun, is, Thrun has already gone down, so I'm... Explodes another shower of leaves, and it comes to those bushes' turns. Morath, you're once again restrained. The bushes' assault continues eternally. Uh, that's a 17 to hit, which will hit, and a, uh, oh. Uh, that's another 17. Jesus. Okay, don't worry. These things were not... Effect. Uh, that... Uh, as three... I'm sorry. It's a total of... Should be one more. Seven damage. So it's two and then one, so three points. Perfect. Um, and that's all for their turn. Um, and we go to now you, Thrum. What do you want to do, Thrum? You're back in action. Uh, so, the dryad has stepped away, correct? Yeah, and the dryad is restraining oh. currently two of your allies here. Uh, I, I, I'm bloodied, by the way. Okay. What you want to do, Thrum? Uh, I'm going to send an ice knife at 
the dryad. Actually, it's perfect area because it will not hit your allies if she stands. Does uh, it hit? Does it hit any of the? It it does not hit the shrubs either, but it doesn't hit your allies. Uh, and she's gonna make a dexterity saving throw. Um, yes, yeah, save. Dex save. She has magic resistance, so she'll roll with advantage. Uh, but she fails anyway, so give me the full damage on all of that. That all hits. Oh, so it's a total of seven piercing, and then what's the explode? Okay, another four. four. Eleven points of damage. The Ife Knight <laughs> clashes into her, and uh, explodes in a shower of shards. Uh, you can see some of them kind of pierce into the druid's form, uh, and she's starting to look weakened and tired. Uh, as we move next in initiative... And bonus action, I am going to bomb of the summer court my ally who is bloodied. Morath. Morath. Roll that d6. Uh, and the turn now passes to you, Morath. Ooh, it's six again, plus six, one. Uh, a, a sizable seven points. Um, what it be, Morath? What do you want to do? I'm just gonna break out of this restraining again. Okay. Uh, with the, with a help action. All right, advantage. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> you rip the vine again and step in. I imagine. I assume you're stepping in. Oh yeah, I'm gonna step right up to her and kill her. Her turn is very much her turn. Uh, it's interesting yeah. how that's been working out. Um, and you kind of back into May. Uh, and that is her turn, I assume? Oh yeah, besides bearing my angry looking things. I, I am just a, a ball of hatred right now. Yeah, you are none too happy and I don't blame you, Judy. Does being restrained affect melee or ranged spell attacks. Disadvantage on attack rolls, so would affect yeah. them, yes. Unfortunate. Very well then. Barkskin is down though. Hmm. Wait, I have advantage on wisdom-based attacks from being in a great tree form, so I roll neutrally. Alright, make an attack. Uh. Oh, unfortunately, <laughs> seven ain't gonna get you there. Uh, as the thorn whip dodges past, uh, she kind of looks past and moves to the side. Close. Anything else on your turn? Um, I don't think there's anything else I can do. All right, that's gonna be her turn. Um, she is going to, not even at this point stepping away from you, Morath, uh, is just going to double down and just smack at you twice as hard as she can uh, with these two things. Uh, the 17 is going to hit you for 11 bludgeoning damage, which you reduced to 5. Uh, as the clubs come down, now just bearing down on you with all of her force, <laughs> um, gonna, the first one blocks the side. As a style point, I'd actually rather just grab the first one with a hand. Absolutely. Uh, you catch the club as you're kind of holding on to it. The second one uh, catches you into the side, uh, but you're just baring your teeth and, and gritting down uh, as you're now, your faces are inches away from each other. Um, she looks at you and just, you are a plague upon nature. Uh, and that is all for- and you are a new axe handle waiting to be paired with my hands. Oh, Jesus. As we move next in initiative to the top, Vadius. All right, I'm gonna take out another bush. Bring him down. Um, seven, unfortunately, will miss. It strikes into the ground next to these two bushes. Anything else on your turn? Uh, pass the uh, the bonus aid along, and then uh, hop to another tree to always keep. All right, always on the move. Um, that's a seventeen. Oh my God, these bushes, Morath, they will not stop hitting you. Uh, not in a thousand years. A two d four plus two. Uh, that's going to be a total of three to one and four to two. Another three damage as these bushes continue to assault. And we move next to your turn. I'm sorry, to Thrum's turn. Thrum, what do you want to do? I am bloodied again. Thrum is going to <clears throat> recast the flame blade. Yeah, Dryad's looking rough. And step up and attack the Dryad. All right, go ahead and make an attack roll. 12 is going to hit. Roll damage on that. Uh, 13, 13 fire. It's a fire damage. 
uh, the flames kind of catch up, uh, and she just kind of ah! uh, lets out a terrible howl as the vines on her kind of uh, uh, the, the vines on her body start to like ignite, and her hair starts to burn in places. Uh, and yeah, you deal a, a sizable chunk of damage. Anything else on your turn? You are a blight against the good name of nature. Uh, and yeah, the dryad looks to be on death's door as we pass to you, Morath. Um, the perfect person to pass, Morath. Um, what would you like to do? <laughs> I'm gonna grab my maul and I'm going to switch it to the axe side. Um, all right. And with that, I'm going to swing it lumberjack style. All right, make me an attack roll. That's gonna hit. Uh, that's 14 points of damage. Um, now action for you. Uh, in time, all interested in resolving the thing. So, opportunity, tell to not make this a killing blow, but it does sound like, Morath, you are interested in making this a killing blow. Uh, maybe not killer. I'm gonna take her legs off. Oh, Jesus. Um, so would you care to describe this finishing blow to me? So, as all lumberjacks do, I'll swing it back into stance and then take a full wide sweep into just the mid-thigh of her and end up slicing through both thighs. With mighty swing, come and to say gory or deep this, much as the dryad just kind of collapses in pain and falls to the ground, um, clearly on the verge of dying, um, as the dryad of Middle Park now stands at the four of yours mercy. Uh, you watch as the shrubs, which were kind of animated in this space, have now all um, uh, have now all just kind of halted in our once again dormant shrubs sticking their legs back into the ground. Oh, wrong, wrong track. Now, oh, music, music will not respond to me. As good faith to my friend Juni, you will not die. Instead, you will live like this to pay for your crimes. Um, the dryad just kind of uh, uh, looks up towards now you, Juni, in this great tree form uh, that you stand in and, and kind of is, is staring at you. Uh, and just You see, as they are now here defeated, they look a little bit... Um, they look like they've kind of calmed down a little bit, and they're looking up at you in particularly here, uh, as they, uh, as she says, I am finished. There's nowhere for me now. It would be better if you just ended it. That Jan would Curtin be mercy. We'll release the uh, great tree form she's holding hmm. and crouch down next to the dryad. I mean, um, I have a, well, my family lives in the Sacred Vale, and we have a um, community there. Just lumberlings and other florins living in harmony with nature, taking care of one another. If you would be willing to come in peace, I wouldn't mind helping you get there. Uh, and the dryad looks up around in the space. I... I will go. Perhaps... Well... Thank you. And she kind of... Um, writes herself, uh, and you see now, she just like reaches out a hand, unable to really move in the state that she's in, but she just touches onto the roots of one of the tree, uh, and you see her just kind of... just kind of absorb into the tree. <laughs> Uh, and then that tree begins to fall off, and a voice from the wind kind of speaks to you now. It would seem that, well, as in nature, violence always begets violence, doesn't it? I should have known this from the beginning. 
I will leave this place to you. Uh, and so there, before uh, you do leave, remember, if, even these humanoids who build these mighty cities, they too come from nature and shall return to nature. And after all, these cities themselves become their nature. Taking their nature from them for your own Per, your, for your own purposes, that is where you went wrong. If you, if you truly wish to live with nature, live with it, don't take from it. And that uh, off and into this, this tree begins to step away and aside and into the woods disappearing. And as it does so, you watch as the flora and fauna around you begins to retreat and recede. You watch as lines magically seem to sink and slump back down into the ground. You watch the grass, which is wild and matted, begins to soften and kind of disappear. Uh, and you watch as from around the area, um, flowers and things begin to just sort of grow out in the park. And as eventually the space returns to what was once, what it once was, a very beautifully and well-maintained park, it becomes that again, perhaps with even a touch more vibrance than it had when you had all been here last. And at the site where, uh, at the site where that tree was, where that felled tree is, which still remains there felled, you can see all sapling beginning to kind of grow up that space. Um, and that, all of you, uh, all of you hear a voice uh, begin to speak out in your minds, ah, adventurers, um, in the distortion, I can finally get through it would seem. Yes, I had a big quest for you today, um, but someone must have already taken care of it uh, because, well, now I can communicate with the central city again. How are all of you doing? Uh took care of your quest. Yes, that was us. Good. Um, in that case, I can bring you home right now. Um, uh, don't worry about the politics of all of this. I'll make sure that, um, well, no doubt, uh, Dorothy will be satisfied with the results. Um, shall I return you all? Just a moment. And I'm going to buzz down where the little sapling was growing. Uh, plant the... the twig and berries that I, I took from the uh, the fallen animated uh, brush and uh, make sure that that's growing up beside the All right, and as you do so, um, Bunny goes, all right, it looks like everyone's ready. And with that, uh, you find yourself all of a sudden transposed and teleported back into Bartholomew's shop, where another a number of onlooking story tier and such adventures are kind of waiting with anticipation as they see you all arrive, having completed your adventure, there is uh, a rouse of, of cheers and success, although perhaps uh, your moments uh, a bit more somber in your result at the end of this adventure. Uh, and Bartholomew looks over, you have, uh, you have done incredibly well uh, on this day. Um, Central City was a, a tangle, a mess, and you have returned um, harmony to the... <coughs> Uh, pardon me, you've returned harmony to the region. Um, so, with that, if you do not mind, I would like to, uh, well, promote you now, all of you, to the fabled tier. <coughs> and, excuse me, a glass of water. Uh, Bartholomew looks at you, and as you all kind of stand there in a line, um, Bartholomew kind of snaps his fingers, uh, and from around... You hear, uh, you hear music. Uh, oh man, such a such a beefy lag on roll twenty today. Um, and oh, can y'all hear me? Yes. It yes. Works. You're lagging pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah okay. Uh, and uh, there it is. Uh, and Bartholomew says, "Congratulations on this day on completing your fabled tier boss battle." 
each of you has proven in your own way uh, that you are incredibly powerful and competent adventurers here within the lands of D&D time. And as such, uh, I believe that time and promotion is in order. Uh, and steps forced towards uh, Morath. And Berthold speaks to you, Morath. You have a, a rage inside of you. This is undoubtable. In your time here in the lands of D&D time, you have brought that wrath down upon your enemies swiftly and effectively, only delivering it where it is very. And as such, I am greatly appreciative of the work that you have done as a part of this land. And Bartholomew kind of hands you over a, uh, a bag containing your Bartholomew books and says, Morath, have you chosen your title? Yes. What? The Thorns of Juniper. The Thorns of Juniper. So you shall be known throughout the lands. Uh, and with that, you hear applause erupt within the tavern, uh, and Bartholomew steps now towards you, Varius. Varius! You are a keen mind. You analyze your adventures from every possible angle and complete them as efficiently and, well, in the most moral way possible given the situation, measuring each action carefully. Vorius, you are a great asset to our community and all your work and effort in the lands of D&D to which you have now entered. Vorius, have you chosen your title? <coughs> yes. If it is to be known throughout the lands, then I would prefer both honest citizen and criminal alike to know that Detective Vadius is here and on the case. Indeed. And that will be the case throughout this world. Uh, and he hands you over your Bartholomew coins and uh, you hear the applause once more. Uh, and thank you, Vadius, for your service. Through from auspicious, auspicious beginnings here in the lands of D&D time, you have um, well, proven to be an effective adventurer. Your desire and uh, constant search for peace and solitude. I believe that you have created that this day in the lands and areas of Central City. Your work is courageous and I am deeply indebted to you for your service to the lands of D&D time. Through. Have you chosen your title? I have. I am Thum, who shrugs off death. Uh, and Bartholomew can have nods. A fitting title indeed. Thum, who shrugs off death, so you shall be known. Uh, and he hands over your Bartholomew coins as well. Um, and once more as the room kind of applauds, he steps last but not least, of course, to you, Junie. It says, Junie, I know that this was difficult for you, but you have overcome it with incredible personal strength and conviction in your ideals. I trust that your love of the natural and your compassion for all things and all lives will continue to serve you and the lands of D&D time well, and you're wandering through it. Thank you, Junie, for what you have done. Uh, and Bartholomew speaks. Have you chosen your title, Junie? To be honest with you, when I first spoke to that dryad, I agreed with her choices. I didn't want to stand against what she was trying to represent. And even though she was misguided, I still believe in the ideals she tried to uphold. So, not just for myself, not just for my crow, but in her stead and the stead of everyone else trying to live in harmony with a world that rejects them or puts them down, I will stand as the guardian of the grove. And so you shall be known. Uh, and with uh, one last grand round of applause, uh, Bartholomew kind of 
nods, uh, and he kind of looks at you one more time, Juni, and kind of nods somberly, uh, and then speaks out once more. And with that, the four of you are now promoted to the fabled tier of adventures. As you continue to travel through the lands of D&D time, the challenges you face will only grow. But I trust that with your strengths and abilities, you shall overcome each obstacle put before you. Congratulations once more, heroes. Uh, and with that, and all of a sudden, just all of the, the music and sound um, suddenly stops, which I can't do because of my roll 20. Uh, and <laughs> If you need a magic item, you know where to stop. Just head on down. Do you want to shop? At my follow you shop. As do you want to do shop? Do? As of course, it's because it's a boss battle, we went very long. Uh, what do we need? Anyone? I'd like to make a bag A good hole. sleep. A bag hole we can do. Um, I can do a good rest too. How many points do you have? Like a fourth uh, level sleep spell probably do it? Go yeah, ahead. I think that'll work. All right, come with me, Bobby. We'll get you good. Thank uh, you. Go ahead and roll it up, Jenny. Uh, the best one that's always. That's correct. Ooh. All right. Uh, you reach into the bag, and uh, your hand passes over first. Uh, it's some kind of large uh, glaive, which doesn't quite interest you. And then um, a small feather, which was definitely a little bit more in your wheelhouse, but it f seems to float away from your hand. Um, what you end up on was a, a cape, um, some type of piece of clothing, uh, which is uncommon perhaps for you as a, as a lumberling, but it's, it interests you. As you pull it out, it, it smells a bit, uh, it smells sulfurous of brimstone. And Bartholomew speaks up, ah, this is a, um, well, this is a classic. Um, you can, um, while well, um, you're holding on to it, it's called the Cape of the Montebank. You can use it to disappear and reappear in another location uh, as if you would cast a dimension door spell upon yourself. Uh, a very uh, interesting piece allows you to uh, make quick getaways or appearances. Uh, and you've gained a cape of the Montebank. Congratulations. So that's, a, uh, that's a classic and a good one. Um, anyone else have anything they would like to do? Uh... You each got a huge pile of Bartholomew with no one spending, huh? Saving up? Wait. Okay. 400 for that. Uh, I will make a bag of pool myself. Uh, All right. I should get luck. someone else. Best of luck to you <laughs> as well. Here goes nothing. Oh, also Ooh, pretty good. good. Your nothing is solid. Um... <laughs> Uh, all right, as you reach into the bag, uh, <clears throat> your hand passes over uh, first what appears to be some type of, um, uh, these are pretty good for you, yeah, um, some, some type of spear, which, yeah, you're, you're an axe person, uh, and then is a bottle of something, some kind of liquid you grab onto that also seems uh, not quite your thing. You go for some solid, maybe a chunk of armor? which isn't usually your thing, uh, but you pull them out, they're small and light. Uh, two simple, uh, simply carved and enchanted bracers. And Bartholomew speaks up. Um, ah, yeah, uh, another classic one here. These are the bracers of defense. Uh, quite simply put, if you are, aren't wearing armor and you aren't um, a shield, you wear them, you get two bonus to your armor. So, uh, as a... If you're using an unarmored defense, you can get a plus two bonus to AC more F. Uh, which I know you're usually an armor guy, but this might uh, put. Actually, this improves my defense. Yeah, so this will push you the uh, the other way, maybe. Uh, and with that, uh, I think that was all. Yes. We'll be right back with Adventure Two Classic on Time. See you all soon. <laughs>